It's been another hot weekend of racing, so let's get out of the start gate and into the action. Taking place between Switzerland and South Germany, the Vorde Engadin Bike Giro pit professional races against amateurs for an epic three-day race in the Alps. With huge climbs and tough descents, riders are also challenged by the high altitudes. The views are incredible and thankfully the weather held up guaranteeing an amazing three days of racing. Germany's Sabine Spitz and Canyon Topeak's Christian Hynek of Czechoslovakia took the overall wins over the three days of racing. Sabine Spitz was tightly contested by Adelaide Morath who took the lead in day two, but Spitz pulled out the stops to take day three and the overall win. Christian Hynek took a comfortable lead from day one. He extended his lead on day two with a win by over three minutes. He could relax a bit on day three and took a comfortable fourth place and the overall win. The fourth and final round of the International D'Italia series took place in Belluno on the weekend. The MTB Alpago trophy was jam-packed with talent and that showed through in the men's elite race. The start was always going to be important because the course led quickly into the narrowing streets before winding out onto the surrounding trails. Cannondale's Henrique Avancini blasted off the line to take the lead and immediately showed his hunger for the win here. He would stay in contention throughout with a three-way battle between himself, Topado Gapogas's Gerhard Kirchbormer and Nadil Kolidani of Bianchi Cantavale. The lead would swap between these three, but a determined Kirchbormer would not be not denied, and each and every time there was a break, he'd patiently pull it back, and by the final lap, he was able to make the break of his own stick. The 20-year-old Italian had time for high fives and to, be, and to thoroughly enjoy his finish line moment. Colidani held on for a second and the final polling spot went to Henrique who looked very pleased with the result, although battling hard for that win from the outset. Fourth place went to Gail Bertolini who was ecstatic to keep the leader's jersey and the overall 2018 win. After a sprint start by Evie Richards, European champion Jana Bellamoyna of Sand American Eagle was to be the leading protagonist of a long solo ride and comfortable win. The Brit Richard stood behind while, whilst Marika Tovo ranked third, controlled her day and managed to take the overall 2018 title. Jana Bellamoyna's win will be great for her confidence for the upcoming weekend of World Cup action in Valdesol. Moving on now to EWS round four, and riders are told to expect a Scottish winter for the latest round of the EWS, held on the border of Austria and Slovenia at the Black Hole Festival of Petzen and Jamnica. Off camera riding, plenty of natural trails and a ton of nasty looking tech sections proved challenging during a wet day's practice but the Sun played ball and worked to drive the course for two days of action. Day one saw 50 kilometers of racing and Sam Hill leading the men's race with wins on stages two and three. With 28 minutes and 18 seconds of riding over 15 kilometers, it's nuts to think that the top men were spread by only one minute and eight seconds. Hill was being chased hard by Martin Mays, who took stage one, but ended up second on the day, only nine seconds back. Eddie Masters had a great ride on the new Pivot Fibre 29er to bag third in the day. Not such great luck for teammate Rupert Chapman though, breaking a leg in an awkward spot and needing a tricky evacuation. Another position of note was Jesse Malmed in 10th, who was meant to be recovering from a broken collarbone. Business as usual then after day one in the women's race with Cecile Ravenel taking all three stage wins, but not without a fight. Melanie Pugin finished one second behind on stage two, but couldn't quite keep that form for all the other stages, slipping to second, allowing Corduria in to take the second spot for the day. Day two was more of the same in the women's race and Cecile Ravenel taking victory by over two and a half minutes. Melanie Pugin unfortunately dropped another position, beaten to third by Trek's stylish downhill and free rider Casey Brown, who was absolutely rapid on the technical tracks. Usual podium threat Katie Winton finished sixth after a few nightmare stages on day one. She looked to come back in round five to gather as much points as possible towards the overall. The men's race was a tight two horse race, Sam Hill out in front, Martin Mace catching up behind. Mace cut Hill's lead to just 1.6 seconds after stage five, which is pretty mental, considering we're talking about almost an hour of time riding with just 1.6 seconds in it. Hill though was just too strong on stage six, pulling away again and finishing 10 seconds above Mays. Robin Walner bagged third, one minute back. Eddie Master slipped to seventh, not bad at all for a rider who juggles EWS with the downhill circuit. 
Jesse Melamed finishing his recovery ride in the same spot as day one, rounding out 10th place. He'll be firing on all cylinders for the next round, aiming to get points. Let's turn our attention now to the Viamundo MTB Cup. On dusty trails and high temperatures, awaited riders for the Three Nations Cup at Hoofalees. Riders wound their way up and down the steep mountainside on a series of single track and road which provided a good passing place. And there was plenty of chopping and changing of the order throughout. Some of the descents look a bit on the steep side of what can be comfortably done on a cross country bike, providing a course that challenged both riders fitness and skills. The men's win went to Milan Vade with almost a 30 second margin. A decent margin considering the high temperatures on such a sustained effort over almost one and a half hours. Marcus schult lunham got himself into second position, 30 seconds back from Vader, with Hugo Draco in third with a further deficit of 40 seconds. The podium was rounded up by Joshua Dubau and Nick Van Paul in fourth and fifth respectively. The women's race saw similar margins of victory with Anne Terpstra taking the top spot from Sophie Van Verswart by just under 30 seconds. Both Terpstra and Von Verswart had a decent breakaway going, from the rest, going through the rest of the pack with margins growing exponentially from there. Perrine Clozel took third, three minutes 30 back, and Sabrine Eno bagged fourth with a five minute deficit. Fifth was, fifth was Fabien Schoss, just over eight and a half minutes back. Maybe the dust and the heat did actually take its toll after all. Time now for the IXS European Downhill Cup, and 270 riders from 29 countries worldwide made their way to Abertone in Tuscany on the weekend. Bryn Dickerson and Monica Hrasnik taking solid wins in the men's and women's elite respectively. Dickerson from New Zealand took a three second win from his FS Fun factory teammate Harry Malloy from the UK. It really was an international field at this event with eight different nationalities in the top 10 alone. Slovenia's Monica Rasnik took a narrow win by just over a second from Germany's Nina Hoffmann and Elena Farina from Italy in third place. And so whilst we're on Italian soil and moving on to the action that's coming up this weekend around the world, the World Cup downhill moves to the tortuous slopes of Val di Sol next week and the battle at the top is turning, into the, turning the series into one of the strongest ever. Commensal's Amory Piron as the th thinnest of margins ahead of Aaron Gwynn, who is hunting down a fourth title on the trot. Canyon's Troy Brosnan is super close behind in third place and Loris Verge of France in fourth. The UK's Laurie Greenland is on fine form on his Mondraker in fifth after a third place finish last time out in Liagang. But all eyes this weekend will surely be on America's Luca Shaw, who has qualified first on the previous two World Cups, but not quite been able to deliver his, deliver his first World Cup win yet. Loic Bruni is heading back from injury and will be strong, but Gwyn is the master of Valisol and knows how to deliver on what is one of the world's toughest events. In the women's, Commensal has the lead with France's 2017 World Cup champion Miriam Nicole on 10 point lead over Trex Rachel Atherton, who is chasing title number six. Tani Seagriff, some way behind in third, but more than capable of stacking up the points. Tracy Hanna fourth and Maureen Caribou in, Cabrou in fifth. After Val Sol, the racing then moves to Val Nord in Andorra the week after before moving across the Atlantic to mont anne and the series conclusion in France at the end of August. So it all makes for compelling viewing and the first time in decades that America has been so strong at World Cup with three men in the current top 10. Remember there's two French in the top four as well, another country that seems to have regained the depth of talent that saw them rule the world for so long at downhill. Another side to this year's World Cup story is how Commensal owner Max Commensal has re-established his place at the top of World Cup downhill racing. 20 years ago, Nico Vulios and Anne Caroline Chausson riding for Sun set the records which are yet to be broken. But today it's the Piron Nicole package that is proving such a force at downhill. Over the next few months then, we will see whether Aaron Gwynn and Rachel Atherton can add to their five World Cup titles and become the first people ever to win six World Cup titles. Gwynn, of course, is aiming to make it four World Cup Series wins on the trot. And finally, here's the best of the rest from the weekend's action that's just gone by.
So that's it for this week's race show. Don't forget to tune in next week for World Cup Downhill, amongst other sports. Uh, in the meantime, check out Neil Donahue's uh, body weight video where he puts on a bulletproof vest to see how much weight affects your riding. Uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like this uh, race report show and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you've not already done so.